The city confronted me. Suddenly, it came into focus. I understood it. I walked forward, exploring the potent dream that shaped my life. All this had been staged and scripted by some incredible author. I began to perceive the machinery behind the city. Hoping for an answer, I continued following the threads. I finally saw it, one of the mechanisms that controlled the facade, one of the scenographies that shaped my mind. I stared for a very long time trying to find its limits, but it was hopeless. It was like finding all the roots of a centennial tree. I decided instead to find the base of the trunk. After a few passages, I ended up in a very strange and elusive place. Many gates shaped an incredible tunnel. I felt pulled in every direction, but my perception of time and space was distorted. Many facades surrounded me. They were fragmented and seemed to burr with the gates. I finally reached the end, but what end? I was unsure, but kept walking. I did not know where I was anymore, but I was surrounded by strange machines. Some were identifiable, while many others seemed to come from another time. I did not fully understand their function, but my mind was whirring. After inspecting one of these machines, I realised they were recording. Every datum, every occurrence, every dimension was freshly sus- Ahead I passed through more banks of record devices and gaped at the immensity of the place. The mass of data it must have collected astounded me in that moment. Finally, I reached the central room and descended to the lower level. From here, an incredible view fell before me. I felt at the same time excited and confused by the depth of that scene. I could not measure the height of the oppressive tower that rose in front of me. Only a few volumes touched by thin shards could be seen from here. I went down again and ended up in a cathedral. At first I saw nothing but empty walls. A low, as a low illumination grew, what seemed to be an exhibition appeared in front of me. I could not say if it appeared because of my presence or not, but a strange notion overcame me, that these images were projections from my inner being. Once again I travelled downwards. I began to comprehend the nature of this vision. It was not only a grand structure rooted in the history of a place, but here memories were also gathered recorded and accrued like some great archive. I saw the ghosts of construction and reconstruction, living in the same space as some great holographic palimpsest. The city was one day being built and then disremembered. What the temporal mind had forgotten was there, hidden deep in the fabric, waiting to be looked upon through the right eye. I continued my journey through the immense trance and reached what seemed to be one of the first stages of creation. The inception of a new building, the stones almost glistened here. They were newborn, a nascent edifice proud in anticipation of a long future. Wooden members surrounded me waiting to be assembled. The hallucination guided my body and my view to another stage, the bottom of the archive. All around me, many doors were revealed by a new light. One sensed each led to a different path. Outside the archive, a world of infinite possibilities awaited. Each door opened to a new journey, exploring one combination of fragments after another endlessly. Every door offered a multiplicity of reality, and the doors stretched out before me, ad infinitum. I decided to enter one of them. The street was an intriguing cacophony. I could recognise some buildings, but they were neither in their original location, nor exactly as I recalled, a type of hybrid fantasy. Some parts were clearly from Moskovsky Prospect, but many others seemed more characteristic of the Staris era, from the centre of the city. The question was not where, but when was I walking? That Moskovsky prospect was not only a multivalency of spaces, but a dimensional congruence in time. It seemed this path had ended. A new vision called.